Hi everybody, it's Mr. Oaks. I'm going to talk to you today about similar figures. Now a similar figure is uh, a figure where we perform a series of uh, translations, reflections, rotations, and dilations so that we get something that is similar to the original uh, pre-image. But it's, so it's the same shape, but it's a different size because of the dilation. If you remember congruent figures, they are the same shape and size, all right? Because we're only doing a translation, reflection, and a rotation. Once we throw a dilation in, then the size changes, so it's no longer congruent. It's not the same size and shape. So just real quick, first we're going to go over the uh, algebraic rules for transformations. So remember, we have a translation, which the keyword is slide, where xy becomes x plus a, y plus b. So we are adding or subtracting something to our x value, and we are adding or subtracting something to our y value to move it, to slide it somewhere around in the coordinate plane. Those two numbers don't have to be the same. They're usually not. A is how much we move to the left or right. So when we move to the left, we're subtracting. When we move to the right, we're adding. B is how much we move up or down. When we move up, we're adding to the Y value. When we uh, move down, we're going to subtract from the Y value. Reflection is flip. So remember, we're flipping the image. X, Y, when we go across the Y axis, we're going to change the sign of the X value. So if it was originally positive, it's going to be negative. If it was originally negative, it was going to, now going to be positive. Similar thing happens with when we go across the X axis, but this time, as you see, the Y value changes its sign. Again, if it was positive, it becomes negative. If it was negative, it becomes positive. Rotation, which was the one that a lot of you guys were having difficulty with, keyword is turn. So if we notice that the shape turns, or we need to uh, do a rotation, we have to be turning the shape. Okay? So for a 180 degree rotation, you'll see the sign on both of the variables changes. So if one of them was positive, it's now negative. If it was negative, it's now positive. But notice, this is the difference between a reflection and a rotation. Here in a reflection, only one of the variables changes its sign. In a rotation of 180 degrees, both variables change their signs. For a 90 degree clockwise or 270 degree counterclockwise rotation, you add those two numbers up, you get 360. That's because if I'm starting at a point and I go all the way around, I'm going to wind up at the same exact point. These two get us to the same point, just one's taking a little longer. So when I do that 90 degree clockwise rotation, you see my x, y, the order of the variables changes. So my x and y switch, but for 90 degree clockwise, the, vari the x variable changes its sign. In the case of a 90 degree counterclockwise or 270 degree clockwise rotation, Again, we're going to switch the order of X and Y, but now the Y value is going to change its sign. The last one we have is dilation. Dilation, simply change size. We're changing the size. So I see that the shape gets bigger or smaller. It's a dilation. So when we do that, our X, Y, we're going to multiply it by this K. So KX comma KY. K is our scale factor. It's the number that we're multiplying our uh, coordinates by, that we're multiplying the length of our sides of the shape by. And so when we do an enlargement, our K is going to be greater than 1. So something like 2 or 5 or even like something like 4 over 3 in an improper fraction where the numerator is greater than the denominator. We're going to be increasing our size, so that's an enlargement. A reduction, when we're decreasing our size, is actually going to be a number between 0 and 1. So it's going to be a fraction, a proper fraction, where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Remember, the top number is the numerator, bottom number is the denominator. So something like 1 half or uh, 2 thirds 
those are in, those are proper fractions and if we use those in our dilation they're going to give us a smaller shape okay so what I have over here and I started a little earlier is we're going to use a series of transformations to change this shape here and I labeled its points our original image using five different transformations now the first one was a translation of seven to the right and two down and that's what we have here and I labeled it with a so now what I'm gonna do so you see it slid from here it slid seven to the right and two down the next thing I'm going to do is a reflection across the x-axis. Now, I know it's a reflection because only one of the two variables changed its sign, the y variable, which tells me that my y value, which is my up-down, changed. So what I'm going to do, if I've got to go across the x-axis, which is here, I'm going to see how far this point is from the x-axis. It's 1, 2, 3, 4 above. So now the new one is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4 below. Okay. Here, this one again, this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 above. So now it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 below. I can do the same thing with these. All i got to realize is that these are going to be across from my other two points to be able to kind of use those to speed up my drawing. So there is completely out of this. There is this is rectangle B. So now I go to my third and that's a rotation. All right? It flat out tells me it's a rotation. It's right up here, rotation. 90 degrees clockwise around the origin. Clockwise is going like this. So I'm going to have this shape. It's like I'm going to turn my paper so that this axis moves over here. If I notice, this is 1 to the right. So if I keep that, it's now going to be 1 under. So I look. This is at y is negative 4 so I go to x is negative 4 and go 1 down this one's at y across from y equals negative 6 so I'm going to do the same thing here and then 1 2 3 4 so 1 2 3 4 And there's my next rectangle, and that is C.